So Barack Obama gave a speech the other day about uh, social media misinformation and disinformation. Now, I, I find it weird that, you know, he comes out of hiding and this is the main issue he's talking about. Because you're the former president, you could talk about any, any of a number of things. You know, you could give a speech on climate change and talk about how that's an existential threat and we need to address that. You could talk about the threat of World War III because what's going on with Russia and Ukraine. Uh, you could talk about the massive amount of income and wealth inequality and about how that destabilizes democracies. But he chose to focus on misinformation and disinformation and how terrible it is. So uh, let's play just a little mashup here of some of his comments and then I'll react to it. For more and more of us, search and social media platforms aren't just our... Whoops. Sorry, guys. That's on double speed because that's how I listen to everything these days. I'll put it back on normal. ...window into the internet may serve as our primary source of news and information. No one tells us that Cla the window... Classic Obama weird pauses. For some reason, they seemed less egregious previously, but now since he's been out of the public eye for a while, when I hear his pauses, I'm like, why are you pausing? Like, spit it out, dog. So is blurred, subject to unseen distortions and subtle manipulations. We just saw a sitting president deny the clear results of an election and help incite a violent insurrection at the nation's capital. And he was banned. He was banned from Twitter. He was banned from, like, all social media. And I think maybe one of them, it's like a timeout and they're going to reevaluate. But I think with... Most of them, it's just, you're gonzo, son. You're done. Not only that, but a majority of his party, including many who occupy some of the highest offices in the land, continue to cast doubt on the legitimacy of the last election and are using it to justify laws that restrict the vote. What does... St that is true. <laughs> All of that is true. Bill nag at me, though. Was my failure to fully appreciate at the time just how susceptible we had become to lies and conspiracy theories. Despite having spent years being a target of disinformation myself, social media companies already make choices about what is or is not allowed on their platforms and how that content appears, both explicitly through content moderation and implicitly through algorithms. The problem is we often don't know what principles govern those decisions. In some cases, industry standards may replace or substitute for regulation, but regulation has to be part of the answer. Beyond that, tech companies need to be more transparent about how they operate. As citizens, we have to take it upon ourselves to become better consumers of news, looking at sources, thinking before we share, and teaching our kids to become critical thinkers who know how to evaluate sources and separate opinion from fact. Okay. So obviously the speech is much longer than that. And he talks on the same topic a lot. Um, so there's a, a bunch of things here. I agree that they need to be more transparent. The uh, social media companies. Now, when he says, look, regulation needs to be a part of this. The kind of regulation that I support, as you guys know, is treating the big social media companies like their public utilities because they're the new public square. But part and parcel with that would be expanding First Amendment protections. You still can't do libel or slander or direct threats of violence or harassment or doxing because those things are illegal. But, um, you know, you would lean on free speech as much as possible. Now, when he says he wants regulation, though, I don't he doesn't. I don't think he means what I mean. He's not talking about expand First Amendment protections because the whole point of the speech is there's so much misinformation and disinformation and it's dangerous and we have to do something about it. So when I hear that, it's alarm bells going off in my mind because, I mean, effectively what it sounds like he wants is like a ministry of truth. They want to control the flow of information even more, crack down on it more. There's another line that he has where he goes on and says like, well, you'll see like news stories and, and fun entertainment news and it's right alongside just some batshit crazy conspiracy theory, which is presented as if it's fact. But my question for him is like, how do you fix that? Like, what do you do about it? How do you fix that? There is no way to fix that. Because I'm sure that Barack Obama himself 
when he was digesting mainstream media news during the Trump years. I'm sure he believed to one extent or another, like the Russiagate stuff, for example. Now, we now know that all the Russiagate stuff was garbage and it was trash, but he could have fallen for a conspiracy theory if he believed those things. So when you say like, oh, you know, you, you need to be a responsible consumer and you should be, you should try to be and like learn to fact check stuff or whatever. What he's not really, he's, he doesn't understand that everybody's susceptible to the misinformation. Everybody is. Um, everybody can get it wrong. This idea that there is a monopoly of conspiracy theories on one side of the political aisle, that's not even accurate. That's not true. Now, could you argue maybe there's more conspiracy theories on the right that are untrue? Yeah, I'd be willing to grant that. But the idea that, what, like, Democrats or the left or centrists or whatever are immune to conspiracy... Of course they're not immune to conspiracy theories. Um, but I think in his ideal world, what he would do is further regulate and um, basically make it so that on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook, you redirect... And you redirect to more established outlets, more traditional authority figures, the, the whole authoritative news thing that they do on, on YouTube. I think he probably likes that model, and he would want to use the power of law to enforce that. And, you know, obviously, I could not disagree with that more. Number one, because it, it would impact me and what I do. Um, and number two, sometimes it's the mainstream outlets that are the, that are the biggest purveyors of misinformation. Like, he's clearly not grappling with the problem here that it was the mainstream media outlets that relentlessly pushed for the war in Iraq based on outright lies. That you have all these, you know, Washington Post, New York Times, CNN. Like, these people have sources in the intelligence community, and they use those sources and are stenographers to whatever they say. So when you have people in the U.S. deep state, I mean that term technically and literally, not like in a conspiratorial way, the U.S. deep state who say, you know, here's what I'm learning, XYZ about Iraq or XYZ about Iran, they just you know, run it as if it's true when there's no verification. They just take their word for it because they're an authority figure. Well, that's spreading misinformation. That's spreading disinformation. You know, I would argue that when Biden pulled out of Iraq and you had, or Afghanistan, excuse me, we're still in Iraq, and you had wall-to-wall -wall negative coverage about how that went down, I would argue that's misinformation and that's disinformation. Because you're lying by omission in that scenario, where you didn't talk about all the negative, horrendous, terrible things that happened when we were there. You didn't talk about all the terrible things as a result of the war, as a result of occupying for 20 years. You didn't talk about the Afghanistan papers and do, you know, breaking news coverage and hair on fire commentary over that. You reserved it only for the withdrawal. And the implication was you shouldn't be withdrawing. So it was like, it was propaganda in service of American imperialism. And that was across the board in mainstream media. That's misinformation. That's disinformation. When Chris Cuomo has Andrew Cuomo on his CNN show, and he calls him like the best governor in the country, and he throws softballs down the center of the plate, as Andrew Cuomo is making decisions that are killing grandmas and grandpas in New York, that's misinformation. That's disinformation. That, at the very least, is a failure at basic journalism. And with Barack Obama here, I don't think he's grappled with those questions. Because I think, to him, this is more about political expediency. How can we control the narrative, we being establishment Democrats? How can we force people uh, to, be, to only consume our propaganda first and foremost and think that that is, you know, authoritative and accurate? I really think that's what's going on. Now, I get it. Look, I get it. Do I feel bad that there were terrible conspiracy theories floating around about him? That, you know, whatever. He, he's a Kenyan Muslim Marxist, and Michelle Obama is actually a trans, uh, a trans woman. She was, she was originally a man. Yes, every negative thing you could imagine. The QAnon stuff is psychopathic. The Pizzagate stuff had real-world negative consequences. There are real downsides to having these conspiracy theories floating around out there. The point is, there's nothing you can do to regulate it that actually fixes the problem. Whatever you do is going to make the problem even worse even worse. So, I don't know. And by the way, once you start going down this path of regulating conspiracy theories, where do you stop? Like, what about the JFK assassination, which a majority of Americans still think the official story is not accurate? What do you do with that? I don't know. These are difficult questions. The world is not black and white. The world has shades of gray. And what we've traditionally embraced 
in this country is the idea that when you have an open flow of information and different perspectives and points of view, sometimes the better perspectives rise to the top. Now, sometimes they don't, but it's still better than any alternative where you have some ministry of truth deciding what is and isn't allowed to be said. And unfortunately, we've already gone pretty far down the path of what he wants. Now, we've done it through private corporations determining their own terms of service, but the terms of service have gotten progressively worse and worse and worse and worse. And so, yeah, you guys know my whole sh my whole spiel on uh, YouTube and how we're being suppressed and snuffed out by the YouTube algorithm. And he brings up algorithms there. And he brings up content moderation there. And um, it's because CNN and MSNBC and Fox News are being force-fed to people um, that outlets like mine are, are being crushed, just being absolutely obliterated. And he wants more of that. And that pisses me off to no end. And he should be more clear about exactly what he's in favor of. Because if he's being honest, and if he's being clear, he would say, we, we need to have some sort of ministry of truth that regulates whether or not we determine information is true or false, what you are allowed to see and aren't allowed to see, what should be banned the second it gets posted, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I just, I really couldn't disagree more. I, I agree that the way the system works, uh, the way the system works, even at its best, is a cesspool. Because you're always going to have the Alex Joneses, you're always going to have the crazy people saying crazy things. That's always going to exist. It's a cesspool. It's terrible. But it's the least bad of all bad options. And really, if people who believe more things that are true want to gain an audience, then become more charismatic. Become, uh, you know, better at the graphics and the elements and the presentation part of it. Like, it's sort of like cheating in a way, isn't it? To be like... These people who have horrendous ideas are becoming really popular. Let's just ban them or let's find a way to snuff them out and hide them in the algorithm. And let's like force feed people our stuff. It's like, why don't you just get better at this game? Why don't you just get better at getting your message out there and your information out there? Why don't you just find a way to appeal to more people? And they're hopeless on that front, of course. Because look, I mean, look what they did with CNN+. Plus. We'll have more on that in a little bit, by the way, of course. Because this is the gift that keeps on giving in terms of a story. But like, they're so... They're so used to not competing and just having a monopoly and being force fed to people through cable news that they think like we have a right, we're entitled to the audience without actually having to appeal in any serious way. And it's stupid and it's wrong and it's dumb. And Obama is now, by the way, Hillary Clinton just talked about this recently too. They're really going all in with this idea of like, we need to do more to regulate social media, more to crack down, more to tweak the algorithms in our favor. Um, and it really makes you think, like, what, do they have something planned that we don't know yet? Like, are they going to, is Biden going to unveil some insane idea of regulation of social media that takes away more freedom? Is that what's going to happen? I hope not. But I also think that this is, they, they look at Trump, who's insane. They look at the fact that he keeps pushing the rigged election conspiracy, which is insane. They look at the fact that basically Republicans all around the country are cucking themselves to him and saying, yeah, the election was rigged, which is insane. And they're like, look at how, look at the radicalization process and the impact it has in the real world. And then they want to like change the rules and change the game to guarantee victory over, over these deleterious forces. But I got news for you. There are always going to be deleterious forces. There's always going to be uh, conspiracy theories. There's always going to be insane people. And you have to deal with that in a fair fight because any attempt to like, weasel your way into snuffing out the competition is only going to backfire on you as well because people look at you like you're doing exactly what you're doing. You're trying to rig the game in your favor, which only adds to the conspiracy theories. So just don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Leave it a, Make it a free and open uh, flow of information and marketplace, and there are going to be some bad actors, but you got to deal with them in, an, in a mature and adult way and debunk them and go through it with a fine-tooth comb. Um, this idea of just like, cheating and saying, well, we need more content moderation and more crackdown on the misinformation and disinformation. You're never going to win that battle. That's not a winnable battle, which means ultimately, I think there, in his heart of hearts, he just wants to control the narrative with his ideas and his politics. And he wants to disadvantage those who disagree, which is not good to say the least. And look, you got to keep it real. We have a term for what he's doing here. It is authoritarian. That is authoritarianism. Now, there are differing degrees of authoritarianism, right? 
like locking up Julian Assange is a is worse authoritarianism than content moderation on social media. But if you're calling for laws to regulate content on social media, that is authoritarian. That is what that is. So anyway, there you have it. Barack Obama with a speech on this issue makes me worry about what's coming next. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.